Hello, I'm Sarah Novotny, and I'm the school psychologist. Hello, I'm Maggie Mills Kohler, and I'm also the school psychologist. Now we're going to be focusing on this topic, supporting CSD students with distance learning. Topic number three, we'll, we'll be focusing on motivation for learning. Some children or students are now struggling with motivation, especially during this time. The three reasons why they're not motivated may be due to having poor executive functioning skills, anxiety and worry, depressed mood, or feeling low. The characteristics of executive function are first goal orientation or task persistence. This requires focus, controlling impulses, and working until completion. Next on the list is initiation, which means being a self-starter and beginning to work without any prompts, reminders, or a reward. Moving on with the list is shifting. The ability to work on one task, then moving on to another, or doing two tasks at the same time, such as reading or viewing a signer and taking notes at the same time. Last on the list is time management. This includes planning ahead, not just for time, but for also the amount of energy involved. For example, when working on a long-term project, you need to figure out if it'll eat up a lot of your time or only a little. Do you work on it the night before it's due or do the work little by little for a few days? For students who have an ADHD diagnosis, who already struggle with attention and organization, they will experience even more challenges when feeling unmotivated. Now for anxiety and worry, it often includes what if thoughts or feeling unsure about what is to come. Naturally, self-confidence will become impacted. Feeling overwhelmed leads to experiencing self-doubt, and then you question yourself and think, can I handle it? As overwhelming feelings increase, your mind starts to feel like it's spinning. Giving up is when you feel stuck and start to believe that you can't do the work, sort of like a mental block. And catastrophizing is when your thoughts become out of control or out of proportion, such as the problem feels so big, even though in itself it is really small and can be easily handled. Sarah mentioned that children can feel those different experiences, so how can we best support them? How can parents and guardians help their child and improve their motivation skills? Well, there will be six strategies and I'll be discussing them. First, we have initiation. What you could do is break down tasks and create daily lists using tech supports such as an iPhone to help support what the child needs. Second is time management. Children could use external reminders, such as a clock, timer, or visual calendar. Teach them time estimation skills that could help them sense their time is up. You could create routines to help a child feel like their daily schedule is stable and they could predict what's coming. Third, we have procrastination. That happens often, right? In this situation, what would we do? I think we should go ahead and have an open dialogue to address the issue, especially if they struggle with perfectionism issues. Do say, do your best to steer a child away from ignoring their tasks. The fourth one, we have organization and prioritizing. Go ahead and create an organization system. Make lists and prioritize them in order. Manage your workflow and break down your time into chunks. For example, a task may require two hours to complete, so you may want to break that down an hour each or into four 30-minute sessions. 
depending on a child's ability to sustain their focus. The fifth one, we have sustained attention. Avoid doing many things at once. Set up realistic work periods. Reduce distractions. Provide fidgets to keep their hands busy as they focus on an assignment. And give short breaks based on a child's needs. Sixth and final, we have goal-directed persistence. Provide goals a child believes they can achieve, which will help them feel more confident to keep working. Provide cues to help them stay on task. Additional tips for all of you, there are a total of five. First, be realistic with what your child can handle. Sometimes expectations can be too high for a child to reach, or in some cases, it may be too low. It's best to find expectations that fit their level. Second, reinforce each effort. For example, a child finished five problems. Two more to go. You can do it. This will help them feel like they, they can succeed. Third, go ahead and set up family meetings. Have open conversations about what needs to be done next. Review every three weeks and monitor their progress. If you do notice a problem, small or big, do address those problems creatively and help solve them. Fourth, provide rewards. Parents and guardians can observe and provide rewards to their child every time they complete their tasks. That way, when a child grows up, they can develop their internal reward and motivation system as they continue to work on their tasks. Fifth, reduce stress and anxiety. This will help them tremendously. Next, we have a presentation coming up, Attention and Recognizing Efforts. This will be interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you.